Ready to start moto camping? Let's check out some gear. Hello, hello, D-Rock here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you all are well. So I wanted to make a video about my basic moto camping setup. Uh, this is fluid, meaning it's always changing depending on what I end up, I guess I should say the environment I end up camping in because things can be a little different in the lower desert to the mountains. So uh, one thing that helps is that I've got many, many, many years of backpacking experience and this is awesome because that roughly translates into motor camping for the most part, gear wise. So join me, let's have a look at some things. Let's get started. So what I mean by translates from backpacking to motor camping is we kind of want the same thing for both endeavors, meaning the lighter the equipment, the better. And this also depends on how well you are at packing me. I tend to pack on the heavy side just because I'm, uh, I want all the conveniences. Uh, it doesn't have to be this way, but it can get a little grueling as far as backpacking. And I try not to do it with the motorcycle as well, but I can tend to overpack also on the motorcycle. So I just have to, you know, I'll check myself. I'll go out on a trip and I'll find out maybe that that system didn't work as well as another system. So this is always evolving. And what I'm going to show today is just some of the things I use. It's not the best method or the best gear, but it's things that'll get you out there. Um, that's all relatively affordable. Anything gear wise, whether it's backpacking gear, quality backpacking gear or quality motorcycle gear is going to be expensive, especially these days. So we need to be, bear that in mind, but uh, there's lots of options, lots of choices out there, and it can be a little tough to navigate. But one thing that essentially rings true for both sports uh, is the lighter, the better, and probably the less gear, the better as well. I'm not gonna go into full detail on everything because I wanna make this, this video shorter, and I'll just touch base on, uh, on everything rather quickly. First thing on the motorcycles, um, as far as panniers, I like soft panniers because I don't typically, I, I, I typically camp not in campgrounds. I, I go way out into the back country. And if you've ever experienced, you know, you laid your bike down or you've, you've experienced a crash on a motorcycle and you've had hard panniers versus soft panniers, you don't want to get caught under a heavy motorcycle with hard panniers. That will injure your leg, soft panniers, work out better. However, this is of course up to the individual, but I use on both my KLR 650 and the Suzuki DR 650, which I also move. I can take these off and move them to my CRF 300L and also my XT 250. These are simply the Tusk Pilot Panniers. Uh, one thing, especially in the desert that I like about these is that there's no zipper to close this bag up. It just simply rolls and then attaches here. The reason being with that is when you go out with zippered equipment like this out in the desert, for example, is because it's so dusty, the, the dust just builds up in the zipper and then eventually it just renders the zipper useless. So this is a good option. You see, I also have these bags on my KLR 650 as well. They're simple to pull off and put on my other bikes doesn't really take too much time. It's just kind of a pain in the butt because you have to do that. They just simply don't attach. You just have to straps like this here, but you know, no big deal. What also comes with the pilot panniers, of course, are the dry bags. And uh, I think these bags actually have some type of water resistant. There's a, yeah, they're somewhat, I've, I've ridden plenty of times in the rain. So they do repel water pretty well, but then they also have dry bags. And I typically keep everything that I want dry in dry bags anyway. When you're moto camping, or when I'm moto camping, I should say, I always carry tools and tubes for flat tire replacement or any quick fixes I need to do to a bike. So I need to take that in consideration also when I pack. And aside from the pannier bags, I also carry, I think this is a medium size. This is also a Tusk dry bag here, no zippers and 
tools go in the bottom and I usually put a sleeping bag and other things in here. Everything else goes in the panniers. So all I'm saying is I always carry tools, tubes to uh, work on the bike if I have to. One thing I like about the Pilot pannier bags is they can also come with these bottle holders here that go on the back of the bags. Uh, I always slip in a couple of spare gas containers such as this. However, I want to point something out right now with these bottle holders here, they will not hold your typical hard plastic Nalgene container, Nalgene bottle. These won't fit in there. So you have to use some, a slimmer water bottle if you want to go that route. Just want to point that out. This is a kind of a general overview of all my camping gear. I don't carry all this. This is just different items depending on where I'm going to be. For the most part, I carry some of this, but not all this on my trips. Let's start with a camp chair. Some people don't use chairs. They just lean up against their back tire. That's cool. However, if you do want to have something to recline in or sit on, I've got two options that uh, work really well for me. Both of them are pretty compact. They're very light. They'll both fit in the pannier bags or on top or somewhere else on the bike, wherever you can find, really. So let's have a look at these. First is a Crazy Creek chair. So this is something I always use backpacking and sometimes use moto camping, depending. And this will not get you off the ground, but while you are sitting on the ground, you can lean back in it. And it's simply just a chair that folds like this. Very easy, very light. Nothing complicated here, and it just simply rolls up. And I think you can get these as cheap as $40, $50 now. I'm not sure. It's been a minute since I bought one, but uh, let's just say under $100 for this. Next item is a Tusk folding or Tusk collapsing chair. And I'm not gonna put it all together, but it simply comes with this, and it looks a little complicated, but it's really not to put together. This is an awesome camp chair. I actually use this. I take this out on the boat too when I'm camping. Um, this is phenomenal. It gets you up on the ground. You can lean back. It's extremely comfortable. And I think, I think there's two sizes. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. So don't hold that to me. But, uh, as far as holding weight, I think this will hold a couple hundred pounds, but, uh, this is also another great option. Fits in the pannier bag. It's very light, collapses down and also under $100 for this. You know what? I'll put it together just so you can see how uncomplicated this is. Because I, I saw reviews about the Tusk uh, collapsible camp chair and people were like, oh my God, this is so complicated. It's really not that complicated. <laughs> it's obviously got where you, this goes on the ground and then this is the frame for the chair. And like I'm doing this in real time. So putting this together really is not that big of a deal. On this part, you've got the spots where it actually slips into the chair on the points there. And this just goes in, boom, boom. And there you go. There's your camp chair. Oh, maybe I'll just use this to film the video in. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, this is definitely good enough to check out some sunrises and sunsets. I weigh 170 pounds, no problems here. I'm sure it could go heavier, but very easy camp chair to bring along. While we're at it, might as well show the crazy creek. Oh. There we go, this gets you on the ground. This, and your straps here is what you use to lean back, forward, whatever. It's also very comfortable. What about shelter? Well, I carry two different tents. One is a two person tent and that's when Jen's with me. Um, I don't, I'm not showing that because I generally don't do as much moto camping that way. I usually do solo moto camping. So I'm just gonna show what I bring when I solo moto camp. Once again, there's lots of choices out there However, what I use, and which is just fine, is the Lynx One backpacking tent. It's just a one-person tent. Uh, there's, I've got multiple videos where this tent, I use this tent while I'm moto camping, so check those out. I can link them, I will link them. But easy, easy to put up, 
durable. It's got a rain fly. Very I mean, it's as comfortable as it's going to get with the one person. You can't stow all your gear in there with you, but it's wide enough to accommodate an X-pad mega mat. So that's important. But that's the tent I use. Um, multiple choices on one person tents out there. I think I bought this tent for just over a hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken. It's been a few years since I purchased it. So it's probably gone up like everything else has. But something I also bring with my tent is a ground tarp or small ground cloth. This goes underneath the tent just for, um, kind of protects the tent for the most part. It's not gonna do very well, cactus spines and everything. It's just, maybe more of like a peace of mind type thing. Or if the ground's wet, that'll protect the tent somewhat from getting wet. But I also sometimes, not all the time, sometimes carry, I like uh, the Unigear here. This is a tarp. Uh, this is a pretty big tarp. I think it's, it might be 10 by 10. So I can bring this, which I can drape over the bikes. I can drape over the tent. I mean, I can do lots of things with the tarp, tent, ground cloth, and it doesn't take much room. I usually carry the tent on top of the pannier, one of the pannier sides like that. That's generally how I carry the tent. And then these just go in the pannier bags. Before I continue on with the rest of the gear on the table, I just want to bring up one more thing, which are dry bags, aside from the dry bags that come with the uh, pilot panniers. Uh, you can get, and I use these, this is like a seal line Baja bag, dry bag here also use a dry compression sack. And this is what the tent goes in, I'm sorry, this is what the sleeping bag goes in. I can compress the sleeping bag and it also makes it waterproof. So, you know, if I get in a deluge, a heavy rainstorm, I don't have to worry about my sleeping bag being soaked. Because I don't do a lot of camping at um, campgrounds, so to speak, that have water, I just, I'm out there in the middle of nowhere. Like I say, I have to bring my own water, so, Two good options, bladders and hard-sided plastic containers. Uh, the bladders, so this is a one liter Nalgene bottle. I usually carry multiples of these and I'll also carry bladders. Um, platypus are nice. This is an older one. I don't know about the new ones, but it's a, it's a thicker plastic material. Then you've also got these kind of thinner plastic larger bladders. This holds two liters. You can get them up to one gallon, two gallons, but uh, you need to just, when you put these in your panniers and bladders, you need to be pretty conscious of if to make sure there's nothing sharp that's going to puncture them. Or if your bike takes a spill in the desert, in the mountains, wherever you hit a rock and it punctures the bag, there goes the water. But it's just something to consider because I do always have to carry all the water when I'm out in the desert. So I need to be conscious of that. Carrying water is, can be a challenge sometimes, or at least protecting that water. I like the hard side of plastic. However, they're bulky and they take up lots of space. So, you know, what are you gonna do? You just, a little bit of both, basically. So what about cooking food and boiling water for coffee or tea? I'm down to the most simplest thing I can carry anymore. I, I used to get all, I'd bring all the ingredients to make you know, gourmet meals out there and I just don't care anymore. <laughs> the simpler, the better, the most convenient, the better. So I'm pretty much down to, you know, instant coffee and uh, freeze dried foods, which is fine. 99% um, of the time, it's just simply about convenience for me now. I just, those days are, are past. So when it comes to preparing meals, I go the easiest route when moto camping or backpacking so i just throw that out there but <clears throat> what i carry is uh, a very light camping cup you know boil your water make your coffee goes in there you've got a container of gas this is an msr product but there's different brands you can get this at any outdoor store <clears throat> as far as a stove i carry this is an msr pocket rocket i've had this for years just that. That's it. It simply screws in to the gas canister there and it's got one setting which is high. <laughs> These fold out and the cup just sits on it like that, boils the water, 
That's all you need. Simple Simon. It's got one switch on off. Doesn't get any less complicated than that. So, and freeze dried. Uh, there's not just Mountain House, but there's different brands available now as well. Lots of selections, any outdoor store, Amazon, online, Walmart, you can find the stuff. And they're not bad. You've been riding all day long. By the time you get camp set up, you're starving. Anything's gonna taste good. So, this works for me. This works for Jen. Simple, convenient, fast, done with it. That's pretty much how we roll now. These three bags are generally what I usually bring um, in some form or together or two or three. It all depends really on what I'm looking at, duration of my stay. One of the bags, for example, this one here has toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, ibuprofen, all these things that I can just get at if I need it, eye drops, all this stuff is just kept in this. In this bag I keep like uh, coffee, sugar, wet wipes, uh, matches, lighter, stuff like that. And also the camp stove, fuel container, cup all go in this bag as well. And this carries a few other things as well. Go over that in a second, but definitely wet wipes, toilet paper. Yep, very handy. Sunscreen. Yep, and to another degree, insect repellent. And I've got a, kind of a harder case here. Uh, keep headlamp in. Carry spare batteries. So basically, I just keep a, a couple, two to three smaller bags with toiletries and other odds and ends that I can get to easily if I have to. Now, as far as electronics go, I don't carry much in that aspect. I've got my phone, of course, I've got all the camera gear, and then I carry two other items. One, I just, just a Ziploc, but it's also in a dry bag as well. I'm a little cautious like that. But I keep this in a hard-sided container, and this is based, that's why. <laughs> And this is basically a spare battery charger. These are pretty cheap these days. It'll fit two USBs. It says it's solar, it can recharge solar, but that takes hours and hours and hours. I just make sure it's charged up before I leave the house. And I keep a couple spare cords in that I can attach uh, my phone to and charge batteries or whatnot. So there's options, quite a few options available for something like this. And it's just down to what you care to carry. Now, as far as the other item, aside from the phone and camera equipment, is I carry this no matter what all the time, whenever I'm riding the motorcycle, moto camping or just out for the day or for a few hours. And that's a Garmin inReach. So this is a satellite communications device and I can basically get an SOS signal out if something happens to me and I'm way out in the back country. I don't have to worry about being in an area where there's no phone service. I can communicate with someone with this device pretty much anywhere, I think on the planet. So it's, uh, it's a little spendy to get into. I think I started out, I think the, the, the device was 500 or so dollars and then I pay 11, $12 a month for the service, which gives me 10 emails a month, and of course the SOS feature. It's well worth the money and the peace of mind. Hey, sleeping pads, I have two examples right here. So the days of just sleeping on the ground without a pad are long gone for me, let me tell you. So I've got two options that I currently use depending on how I'm feeling and space available. Uh, for uh, just, I don't even know if they make this pad anymore. This is a big Agnes pad. This is the Q-Core Deluxe Insulated. It also comes with a dry bag, or I think, no, I'm sorry, this is probably separate, but you can use this to inflate the sleeping pad. How brilliant is that? That just goes into the end valve on the pad and you just fill it with air and like that, it'll inflate the pad. This gets up to, I believe, three inches, which is good for colder weather. The farther you are from the ground in cold temperatures, the warmer you're gonna be, remember that. So this is three inches, not to mention comfort, but I believe this is three inches. This is a great pad just for, you know, it's, it's small, packs down small. Now, if you wanna go ultra comfort, 
Then look no further than the X-Ped. Oh, where we go. X-Ped Mega Mat. This pad is big, it takes up a lot of space, but it fits on both my motorcycles. I mean, I just strap it to the, to the top of the pack where I keep my tools in on the back on the tail, tail rack there. Works out just fine. This pad, I believe it's four inches. So extremely comfortable. It fits inside the one person tent. It literally is like being on your bed. This thing is, oh, I love it. And especially if you're out in colder weather, this thing gets you so far off the ground that you stay very warm. Uh, however, it does take a long time to pump up. It does come with an inflator. I don't know if you can get one that operates off uh, batteries, probably, but it's just this, we've done videos with this pad camping videos and it's 20 minutes of just and I think it may be to a degree self-inflating, but if you want absolute comfort, man, <laughs> you can't go wrong with an X-Ped Mega Mat. But, I mean, it's big and bulky, but man, is it comfortable. You will sleep good. Much better than something small like this. And once again, with air mattresses, air pads, there's lots of choices. Um, so it's kind of down to what you like. And finally, sleeping bags. Yes unstuffed stuffed one thing i'll point out with sleeping bags is that they sometimes come with stuff sacks and a lot of times those stuff sacks are just crap so do yourself a favor buy an aftermarket stuff sack for example with one i just showed the see the summit this is a waterproof stuff or a compression sack i should say this is really easy get your sleeping bag in compresses down saves you lots of space and like i said it's waterproof all right so when you're choosing sleeping bags, this can be difficult. You've got a couple options. You've got synthetic bags and you have down bags. There's a difference between the two and there's multiple differences actually. So I just wanna talk about these briefly just so you have a basic understanding. But <clears throat> synthetic versus down, there's always a debate which one is better. So we'll talk about what happens if your sleeping bag gets wet with a synthetic bag, it's gonna dry quicker. A down bag that gets wet, you're, you're, in, you're in a world of hurt. It's just no bueno. Also, as far as compressing a sleeping bag down, a, like this, a down sleeping bag is gonna compress smaller than a synthetic bag. As far as warmth, down sleeping bags are generally considered warmer than synthetic bags. It's kind of up to the individual whether you sleep hot or cold. Some debates on that, but just as a rule of thumb, down is generally warmer than synthetic. Also, down is more expensive than synthetic bags. So I pretty much just go strictly with synthetic bags these days, even though I live in a dry desert environment where I don't have to worry about getting the bags wet. I keep uh, this, these waterproof compression sacks come from camping out on the boat when I take all the camping gear out and go out like on Lake Mead or Lake Powell, for example. So I have to protect the bags. But I, I, like I said, this translates over to moto camping. I just move it over to moto camping, works just as well. And it just adds that little extra protection. But uh, like I said, I pretty much just go with all synthetic bags, although that may change. I go back and forth every few years and think about getting a down bag. It's not that big of a deal. As long as you protect it in wet environments, then you're good to go. And it is, it's a warmer bag, I think anyway. So I don't have all my bags out with me. I've got multiple sleeping bags. Two of them I'm showing right here. Uh, this one in the stuff sack, I actually got to pull this out because I just got back from a backpacking trip, but this is my zero or five degree bag. This is a North Face bag. Pull this out real quick. There. And I will list it for you. This is the North Face. I think it's the furnace. Yeah. The furnace 550 so this is one other thing i want to point out with sleeping bags so this is rated at five degrees fahrenheit so just above zero degrees however this one <laughs> if you're in five degrees sleeping this thing you're going to have an extremely extremely miserable night so and this is nice because it states this right here so for example the comfort level of this bag actually only goes down to about 20 degrees and that ain't true either. The limit of this bag is nine degrees Fahrenheit and extreme minus 36 Fahrenheit, no way. So I get, this is a five degree bag. 
I get cold in this bag when it's like just under freezing, 32 degrees. This bag is cold for me. So I just want to point that out. You get a zero degree bag, it ain't for zero degrees, man. It's probably for 20 degrees. And if you hit zero, you're going to freeze in it. So that's one thing that a lot of people get wrong about sleeping bags is that the temperature it actually states doesn't really mean that it's going to work at that temperature or work very well. It may keep you alive, but you ain't going to enjoy it. <laughs> so I've got multiple sleeping bags. That's a five. This is a 20, 20 degree Fahrenheit. And this product is Nemo. I, I thought I'd give this a, sh a try because generally most sleeping bags are what we call mummy style. And you basically sleep like this. You know, you've been camping. I can't stand it. I never I sleep horribly. It's just camping. But the Nemo bag um, had a little interesting. It's synthetic, of course, and it's a little wider. So, and I gotta admit that it's pretty darn comfortable because I'm a, I move around, I'm a kicker, and this bag has been very good. However, even though it says it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit, goes down that no way, man. I'll freeze in 40 degrees in this bag. So it's one thing you need to take into consideration when you're checking out sleeping bags is that uh, a lot of times, you know, you get a 20 degree bag, it'll keep you warm, maybe at 40. I'm a cold sleeper. I'm not a huge dude, I'm a little thinner, so I get cold a little easier, but this also translates into what you're sleeping on top of, you know, inches off the ground versus close to the ground. So all these things you need to take into consideration for your sleeping equipment. But just like everything else, there's lots of things to choose from price-wise, down versus synthetic, on and on. So these are just a couple examples of what I use. All right, now all you gotta do is get all this packed up, put on that bike, and you're ready for adventure. There you have it. Quick look at some of the camping gear I use on my moto camping trips. Like I said, this always evolves and is changing. Uh, this is just a basic setup of what I have to choose from, depending on the environments I end up camping in. Most of the time I don't camp in um, uh, campgrounds that have, you know, bathrooms and running water and all these things. I usually, I'm out in the back country somewhere. It's not to say that I won't, but they definitely are convenient and handy. And there's some beautiful, you know, maintained campgrounds that are totally worth spending the money and time to get to. Uh, there's also the joy of just being out in the back country and being able to camp wherever you want. So it just depends on you, the individual, what you want to do, where you want to go, how you want to get there. So there you have it folks. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps us out tremendously. We'll see you next time. Lots more content on the way. Stay safe out there. D-Rock out. Adios.